Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Taylor and I'm a fine art nature photographer from Dayton, Ohio. And in this video, I'm going to be taking you on a little bit of a journey here as I go from shutter capture of the image with the camera all the way to printing, framing, and matting your work. So, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I opted to use my backyard just because it's very close to home and it makes sense for this video. It'll just be a nice little simple introduction into finding a photograph in the outdoors. I went out to my backyard here and at the edge of my backyard where it meets the next lawn, uh, it's been some kind of overgrown grass here, but I found some daisy flowers. They're called fleabane. So I'm gonna take a simply a photograph of them. I have a 50 millimeter uh, prime lens on here, also known as a nifty 50, and I have my settings at 160th of a second, f5.6, and ISO 640. And it's simple, just one shot, a shoot in raw mode, which I'm going to edit later on on the computer in post-production, which I'll show you. But for now, I'm going to take this image here, and uh, hopefully the results turn out pretty well. In terms of uh, choosing the subject, uh, I love doing uh, flower photography, typically macro photography. I'm doing different wildflowers such as this, and I really enjoyed the subject. Uh, it's one I photographed previously, but um, I just really like the illustrious kind of shapes of this. And since we're deeply shaded underneath this tree over here, that just means that you know I can have some nice overcast diffuse light as well. All right, so I feel like I got a sufficient enough material here to work with, so I'm going to plug the camera back into the computer, and we're going to edit the images here. Alright, so I have the uh, selected RAW file that I chose loaded up on my photo editor here. And I'm just going to choose a few filters here, some global sliders, uh, just stuff to simply just kind of get an overview of really my kind of editing style. So I'm going to use this one called Accent AI Filter, and that essentially just raises the brightness, kind of overall just kind of increases the contrast and the sharpness of the image here. I always like to use the Clarity Slider, um, just to add a little bit more depth to the image, and I really want to kind of emphasize that part of this image as well. I shot this at f5.6 because I wanted to really let in enough light since it was deep in that shadowed area of underneath the tree, as well as also wanted to drop out the background out of focus and just put more distance between that and the subject here. And for my next step here, I'm going to use HSL, that's Hue Saturation Luminance, and it's going to, I'm basically going to use a saturation portion of this slider here. And I'm just going to pump out the screens a little bit more, just to put some more kind of just uh, kind of that foliage, that nice little look there at least. I'm going to bump up the yellow since I did focus on this central kind of a daisy flower here. This is the, probably the best looking one out of the bunch. As you can tell the ones on the, the right side here weren't fully in bloom yet. And then the one in the background was obviously kind of out of the way a little bit. And then the one, the second best one was this one on the far left there. So I simply focused on almost on the rule of thirds right there as it's kind of just off-centered. So yeah, I pumped up the, the yellow and green here, um, just, just ever so slightly. You don't want to make it too dramatic of a slider here. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to raise up my exposure overall just a little bit more, but not too much because then you're going to overblow the highlights of the whites, uh, the little petals of these uh, daisy flowers. Typically one of the last things I do with my editing workflow here is I like to add a vignette. Um, do it pretty much on every image. Um, the amounts that varies really with each image. It depends on what you're really kind of going for in this case. I'm definitely going to do a much more subtle one. Usually if it was a black and white photo, I would make it a much more dramatic look. As you can tell, it really starts to kind of creep in there around the halfway mark. But yeah, I'm just going to add a very subtle one right there. All right, and I say the image is to my liking, so I'm just going to simply save it as Daisy Fleabane. And I like to make an acronym out of the name, so it'd be DF, and we'll call it 01. It's going to save the image here. So from here, I'm going to simply print straight from this uh, photo editor here. And uh, But first, we got to choose my photo paper of choice. So an important part of your workflow here, especially if you print your work like I am here, 
is to really choose the most effective photo paper that you want for the image. Uh, each kind of image begs for a different kind of type and uh, style really of photo paper they'd like to use. Uh, typically matte photo papers are going to be used for much more darker, much more high contrast, typically black and white photos. But uh, since in this case I opted for a more color kind of composition here, then I'm probably going to choose this semi-gloss paper. I'm going to print it not too big. I'm going to do on this 8x10. Uh, it's Canon semi-gloss paper, and I feel like that's going to be a nice little effective look to it. Kind of gives a little bit of uh, some of that kind of feeling of luster photo paper, which is uh, personally my favorite, um, with that kind of more stipply kind of look to it. But this won't be too high sheen of a gloss, which uh, I definitely don't want to, you know, really kind of detract from the whole kind of image and experience of viewing it. So I feel like if it was too high gloss, then it would just be a much more unnatural look to it, and I want to add some little bit of texture to it. So I feel like the semi-gloss in this case would be a nice kind of happy medium here. So, all right, I'm going to pull out a sheet here, and we'll go ahead and print the image. So I decided with my matting options I have here, I'm going to print this at 5x7 on that 8x10 photo paper. You don't exactly have to print borderless with every single image. Uh, I'm not here, of course. And then uh, for fit picture the frame, I definitely don't want to do that because I would enlarge it and make it very unattractive. It would also decrease the quality as well. Uh, I'm going to keep the quality at high, of course. And then uh, make sure it's very important, choose the right photo paper that you have here. So I'm going to choose semi-gloss, like I said. And all right, we're going to go ahead and print. All right, it's finished. As always, make sure to get name brand photo paper because the quality is just unmatched compared to the generic brand. All right, from here, I'm gonna take it to my little trimmer here and I'm gonna just simply line it up and get all cut, you know, trimmed to size really so that way it can properly fit in the photo frame here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chop this up. Nice and easy. See how clean of a cut that was? All right, so from here, I typically like to just take a moment and sign my name in the bottom right-hand corner there. If I'm going to put an addition, I put it down there, and then I can also title it and put that in the center. But um, I think I'm just going to simply sign it down here for the moment. The image looks great overall. The more I look at it, the more I really like it. I like the nice colors and contrast of it. And so I also want to mention that I use a fade uh, resistant pigment type of ink, uh, Uniball pen. That, you know, I use the sign my signature there so that way it doesn't fade or smear the print or anything and damage it in any type of way. All right, so from here, I'm going to cut out my mat and we'll make a little nice border for this image. As one can imagine, matte board comes in a variety of different kind of shapes and colors and sizes here. And I have this nice two ply, uh, it's a nice bulk sheet that I bought and has a nice simple gray kind of aesthetic and look to it with the color which I feel like is going to look really nice and present this image well and so I'm going to simply cut it down I already have it measured out here with pencil just lined up I'm going to cut it down and trim it to 8 by 10 here and to trim that down I'm going to use this nice steel straight edge here and just simply line the cutter up on it and just cut both of the angles there and then later on when I cut the opening or the hole of the mat board I'm going to use this nice kind of push style a bevel cutter here and it's going to be a nice little just look to the image uh, matting really provides a nice kind of professional kind of presentation to the overall image all right so i'm going to go ahead and measure up i'm going to cut this out and i'm going to cut the opening and we'll put it all together here all right so i have the mat cut properly sized to eight by ten here like i said it's not too big at all as you can tell and i'm going to Put it, line it up. First, I'm going to measure it, but now I'm going to line it up on this uh, nice kind of mat cutter here. 
So the real convenient thing about this particular mat is that all four sides are the same uh, measurements. So they're about one and three fourths inches. And so it's going to just make it a lot more convenient. I have to mess around with, you know, adjusting all those different measurements in the scale here. It's all going to be the same size. So I just have to cut it, move, and just kind of go work my way around all four sides. And then we'll cut out the mat here. As you can tell, there's the pencil measurements. I already got them dialed in, and we're just going to cut the mat now. Alright, so I cut the mat here, I'm just going to line it up, now you're probably thinking is this a mistake, no not technically, um, I did deliberately choose to leave a little end piece on the bottom, because I kind of changed my mind here, I'm going to put an addition number and title it, um, just for the sake of this tutorial here, so that way on this bottom bar, I can title it like I said, addition number, and then have the signature. Um, just to kind of show it. You obviously don't have to do that. Obviously you can measure accordingly and make it to your own liking. Um, if you want to have it just you know, cover that or if you don't even, if you just want to exclude all the information altogether, you can do that. Obviously you're the creator and it's totally up to you. But I decided for this image, uh, just so I could display it uh, for the video here, that I would show you guys. All right, from here I'm going to make a what they call typically a window mount. And I'm going to just put this archival safe tape I wouldn't recommend using scotch tape or any kind of masking tape as those can degrade the materials over time, especially if you want to preserve your images for, you know, years to come. So I have this special kind of uh, framers tape here that you use with archival purposes here, as in framing or matting photographs. So I just simply cut out a few squares here, but I'm going to only put them on the top part of the, the backside of this uh, image here on the mat. And essentially they call it a window mat because that way it can just, as you can see, hang out. And the reason I would do that is just so it gives, you know, the print a little bit of uh, room to breathe. And that's really important. I think it's essential. Um, you want to treat these, uh, these prints you, that you make really preciously. And so this helps also to preserve the quality for many years here. Uh, I'm going to frame it here. So I have this nice simple 8x10 frame here with some uh, plexiglass here. And then here's the back end, and we're just going to finally put this all together. It's basically going to be like a sandwich um, from here on out, and we're just going to put all the, the layers together, and then that'll be it. All right, so I have the finished product here, and it looks very, very nice. I really, you know, pleased with the results here. So, let me know what you think. Uh, I really like how it turned out, and uh, the whole process, pretty much from start to finish, took about give or take about an hour here. So, very, very nice, um, very fast way, at least, of you know taking an image here. But that was the goal of the video. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. You just watched a, uh, I'll be a pretty brief uh, tutorial or introduction, really, to showing just how, you know, go out in the field and take an image here, come back on the computer and edit it, and then further print it, mat it, and then frame it as well. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a good day. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for watching. This behind-the-scenes experience was provided through a grant through CultureWorks, the local Dayton Arts Agency and Unite Art Fund. If you'd like to support arts organizations and artists like myself, you can do just two things. One, you can share this video with your followers and friends. And two, if you're able to, you can provide a donation to Campaign for the Arts at www.cultureworks.org. With just one gift, you can support multiple arts organizations in our community. Thank you.